Good morning. Um, so, like uh, it was said, my name is uh, Joav Kutner. I have a long title and uh, some uh, long references. Um, <laughs> so, I'm, uh, I'm the co-founder and CEO of a company called Aura Inc. Um, and I'm also a co-founder of a company here in France called Akenio, which is an open source uh, product information management system. Very proud of that team. If you haven't heard of them, they're from Nantes. And uh, I highly recommend that you check them out. Um, and before all that, I, I co-founded the company, and I was the CTO for a company called Magento. Um, and that's uh, something I'm going to talk about a bit today in our journey with open source and what happened uh, when we met some forks on the way. Um, and we'll talk about a bit about that. So um, really wanted to share with you this journey that we did um, at, um, at Magento and where we, um, we ended up with. And that all started uh, when we um, started a company called Varian in 2004. That's the company that actually developed Magento. And uh, we were doing anything that customers were asking us to do. We were basically a services company that uh, back in this time, 2004, a lot of companies were ditching the desktop and moving online and needed custom application to be built. And we did anything. We did intranets. We did uh, community websites, if anybody remembers that, social networks. Every company had their own community website. And the reason we were able to do that is because we, we just went to Google, searched for um, what we were looking for, if it's an intranet or any other kind of product. And we found some open source project that uh, did that. We looked at it, it had most of the features our customer needed, and we were very excited about it, learned how to kind of hack it or modify it or customize it. And we were able to do a lot for our customers. Um, we also were cheaper than our competitors because we didn't have any licensing costs for our uh, software that we were working on. Uh, we didn't have to certify our developers. So we're very um, competitive versus uh, what our competitors uh, could have offered our customers. And we always also said, yes, we can. When they asked, can you do this? We said, yes, sure, because we had full access. We could modify anything. So it was a very exciting time at Varian. Um, and we didn't notice, but we were really relying on open source stack and open source technology to be successful. And when we started noticing this, this was actually our added value, our competitive advantage, versus all the companies that were competing against us. Slowly, um, after we started the company, around 2005, 2006, most of our requests started being around e-commerce. And we were really um, starting to service more and more e-commerce and companies that wanted to go online and have an online store. And when we looked for a solution that will help us to do that, like everything else we did, we found a solution called OS Commerce. And I don't know if anybody still remembers it or not, but it was one of the best e-commerce open source solutions out there at the time. It was a true community uh, project uh, led by one person in Germany. And it actually enabled us to launch very fast and very good uh, e-commerce sites for the time. And um, we really liked it. We worked on this uh, project. We had uh, a lot of uh, ideas how to improve it. We were learning and, and starting to do more and more projects than that. Uh, we actually ended up uh, getting a bit technical, but separating, for example, the control and the view and, and being able to have our front-end developers uh, be more efficient when it comes to customizing the front-end with no limitations and doing it much faster. Uh, we use Smarty templates, if anybody remembers that. But um, the idea was that once we did that, we were very proud of our work and we wanted to uh, contribute it back to the project. We reached out uh, to the um, community of OS Commerce and said, look, guys, we, we just created this really good uh, separation of the view and the controller. Would you ever uh, consider taking this back into the product and we want to contribute it? And we hit a wall. They, they didn't reply. They, didn't, they were not excited about what we were doing. Um, and we ended up forking uh, OS Commerce and maintaining it for ourselves. I spent a lot of time and effort just continuously maintaining it uh, just for our customers. So after a while, we got hundreds of uh, e-commerce websites built already with this technology. We started um, thinking. And we hit in this journey, we hit this crossroad. Right? We had to choose a path forward, decide which way we're going to go with OS Commerce. What happened was that... Um, we actually looked around and said, maybe we can replace OS Commerce with a different solution. Tried, didn't find anything that was better than OS Commerce. And at that point, we just decided, you know, maybe we just create our own uh, solution, build it with ourselves. We had some really good developers. We started having a lot of um, uh, uh, thoughts that we know what e-commerce needs and what features our customers need. And we'll just create the platform for ourselves and, and uh, sell services on top of that for our, for our, team, uh, for our customers, sorry, using our team. 
Uh, what happened is that one day I walked into uh, my um, business partner's office, Roy Rubin, and I, and I told him, you know, Roy, why don't we just release it under an open source license? You know, and I really used the phrase, what's the worst that could happen? And if you think about it, what's the worst that could happen? Our business model was not about selling software. Our business model was selling services around software. And if other people kind of try it, use it, and maybe like it, maybe we'll just get some feedback. Maybe here and there some developer will tell us uh, what we did wrong or what we did good. Maybe they'll contribute some stuff. So we really saw the benefit of releasing this under an open source license. And I know this page is hard to see, but this is a, a page that I found when I uh, left um, uh, eBay after we got acquired by them about a year later. And uh, this is the original project plan for Magento. Uh, we actually had myself and three developers work on this, and we had to work between 9 to 5 on the paying project, customers that were paying us to do work, and from 5 to 9 on weekends, we actually worked on Magento. And in a pretty short time frame, we actually were able to do a lot, um, relying again on a lot of open source, like Zen Framework and other uh, stack that we were using, but we really managed to do a lot with this project in a very short time. And again, I, I should have probably framed this in my office, and every time uh, our developers tell us, oh, we can't do this or whatever, just point to that. But I didn't, so I found this picture that that's good. Well, um, like every um, open source project, we had a community that started uh, following us. But unfortunately, as much as our community loved us and everything, uh, unfortunately what happened is that when you're on the road, some of the community members uh, really start looking um, around and saying, you know, um, maybe we want to take a different path. And that's what we started um, finding out. So even though we had a very, very vibrant community, very important for an open source to have a community and a good community, we really thought that um, they were uh, also trying to do some other stuff differently. And that's something that is common and should happen, uh, but that's what happened to us. Another thing we started finding was that more and more developers were identifying themselves as Magento developers. That means that they were not identifying themselves as PHP developers necessarily or as Zen Framework developers, but rather as Magento developers. And that be started becoming a thing. Uh, and we were very proud of that, of course. And of course, some of them were becoming more and more successful. Um, and this is um, a dashboard from Odesk or some other job site at the time. And around that time, there was a lot of um, companies and projects that were looking for Magento developers. And they're starting being very, very successful and very, very confident of themselves, so much so that they really thought that they're starting to take over the world. And that was, again, a good thing for us, but something that we really were had to uh, kind of start learning how to interact with them and how to work with them. I just also want to say that a lot of them didn't take the time to become good at what they were doing and didn't really spend a lot on learning Magento, so that actually caused us a big problem initially because a lot of them that just thought, well, I can hack any open source project, I can hack Magento, was not necessarily the case because a lot of times the results were not good, customers were upset, and everybody, of course, blames the framework or the platform. So we started interacting with this uh, community of developers and learning how to work with them. Um, Early on, we thought, well, contribution is something really great. We can use it to our benefit, have them contribute back to us, and we tried that. So when we started Magento, announced that. Uh, a company contacted us and said, look, we love what you're doing with Magento. We can actually contribute back to you uh, web service API coverage for your Magento product, and we were extremely excited. For us, that meant that we don't have to invest in that. We don't have to put resources that work on that. And we didn't know much on how to build good, scalable web service API. So we were really excited about it, trained that company, worked with them very closely, spent numerous hours and resources just to kind of get them up to speed on how to develop that for Magento. And then what happened, of course, is that when we were ready to launch our uh, first version of Magento, they disappeared. They had other priorities. They had paying customers that were more important for them than contributing to our project. And we, hand, uh, we ended up with having no web service API ready for our release. We had to half-ass it, get a really, really fast, some kind of solution. And that's something we actually paid the price uh, until I left, uh, actually, Magento, uh, because we were never got it right. We had to um, do that on our own in the last uh, second. So contribution, the right contribution, was not something we were very, very excited about, because we couldn't rely on the core product being built by third-party solutions or developers. So we wanted to uh, kind of say, you can contribute to our product, that's fine, but we'll maintain the core product. But the only contributions we will take is uh, security uh, patches, if you find them, or any kind of major bugs that you want to contribute back. But features and other big parts of the application, we are going to be responsible for. 
Um, and if you want to do something like localize the product, uh, create some uh, part of it that we did not think about, you can do that through extensions. And that started becoming more and more successful. More and more developers were creating extensions, so much so that we had to uh, create what we called the Magento Connect, which was an extension marketplace. And a lot of uh, developers started uh, putting extensions there uh, instead of uh, contributing directly to a, an overbloated, I'll say, uh, feature set that we already had. And that started being, like I said, very, very successful. Uh, actually, one day, um, my, uh, my business partner, Roy, walked into one of our meetings and wrote on the whiteboard that we are in the business of leaving holes. And if you think about it, that's what we were doing. We were not covering all the requirements of all the companies and all the e-commerce websites that had to be launched. And we were leaving these kind of gaps or holes in our product that developers were filling in and making them, again, more successful. So again, that was something that really turned out to us as something we uh, learned hard that became a strategy for us moving forward. And we started creating this ecosystem around what we were doing. There was developers, there was extension developers, system integrators, uh, merchants, customers, etc. Everybody started becoming part of this ecosystem we were building around Magento, and that started being very exciting. It actually became very successful because the Magento ecosystem was generating around a billion dollars annually in revenues in 2011. And that's something that was very, very good for them because, you know, one billion dollars, you know, they really, really started thinking maybe we can be successful with that. So we started looking at the ecosystem as not only something that's working around us, but how are we actually part of this ecosystem. And by partnering with the ecosystem, investing in the community, and actually uh, collaborating with them, that actually made us more successful. The more successful they became, the more successful we became. And transparency was very important for that, because as long as we talked and kind of told the whole ecosystem where we're going, what's the direction, we could definitely um, benefit from their growth. So if they could be a, million, a billion dollar industry, well, you know, maybe we can be a billion dollar industry. So we were very committed to this uh, core values that we had with our ecosystem and continue investing in them. Well, we talked about those community members that I don't always want to go with you in the same place. And what happened to us was as we were um, starting to continue our journey with them, we started hearing more and more about forks that the community wanted to do to our project. And um, in open source, uh, forks are part of what you do. I mean, it's how people actually develop it. Remember, we forked an open source project. We worked with Cold OS Commerce, like I mentioned. So it's something that we were extremely worried about because we thought, you know, maybe one of these forks are actually going to become more successful than us. Maybe the whole community will start following them. So how do we deal with that? How do we actually make sure that we don't lose the project we invested so much time in? So it's something that really bothered us. And then I started kind of looking at all these forks, kind of learning from them, and understanding why they're happening. And as long as we were committed to learning why the forks or why people in the community thought, thought that it's a good idea to fork our project, and learn if that's something that we want to incorporate into the product, we could actually use that into our own benefit. So again, they were not directly contributing to the project, but by showing us what they feel that our project is lacking or missing, we were able to actually learn and make our product even better. And that's something we kind of started using as a strategy. We used these nasty forks that we really were afraid of and made them these cute things that actually helped us and made our project even better. So. Um, with that, I'm basically done here in 15 minutes or less, and the quick story about Magento and how we actually um, used forks in our advantage. So um, I'm going to be around here for the next day, so anybody that wants to talk to me, I'll be happy to uh, learn how you're using open source and how open source can be uh, used in a good way. So thank you very much. Thank you.